morning, intuitives. Happy election day. And look, I moved the mic closer. Thank you for telling me because I don't watch my videos because I don't like the sound of my own voice. But I'm glad they help and you can all tolerate my gravelly laryngitis, you know, ex-smoker's voice. So, guys, girls, it's election day. If you can vote, you know, assuming you're in the United States, I know quite a bit of my audience is in the elsewhere from the U.S., especially the U.K., Please, please let me move there. I'll, I'll be good. I speak English. I have a college degree, an EMT certificate, a bunch of certifications. Please, please let me move there, please, with a decent job so I can afford some grotty flat in London because London's awesome and I always wanted to live there and, you know, need a job to move there. There's really no other way because Amelia Clark won't marry me. But Anyway, it's election day. If you, regardless of your politics, if you can vote, vote. You know, I don't. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but if you can vote, you should. If you forego voting, then you kind of forego your right to bitch about how the election goes down. In any case, want to get back to narcissism because a question that was posed to one of my posts on Reddit says, I like your videos, but, you know, your narcissism videos seem to more focus on, like, narcissistic parents and narcissistic families rather than narcissistic relationships. And can I give, do a video about, you know, some things to look out for in narcissistic relationships? So that's what I'm going to do. I've only been in one, and it was 10 years ago. She was a borderline, to be specific. That's why this needs titanium now. Not because she shot me her drug dealer side boyfriend did after I caught them and we got in a fist fight. But regardless, um, as most of my videos are, this is going to be an amalgamation of my own experiences and experiences that I've observed through others over the years, some before I knew what any of this stuff was, borderline personality, narcissistic personality. But knowing what I know now, looking back, I can, you know, see it for what it was best I can as I am not a mental health professional. Nevertheless, let's get into this. So, as you already saw the title, what I want to, you know, first point out is when you're in a relationship romantically with a narcissist, it can be a friendship too, I guess, they are not your partner. They are your master. Okay? That's the first thing to understand. Narcissist borderlines in general treat people as possessions. Everybody's a pawn to them. Everybody buddies a means to an end because the only person they really love is themselves. Sure, they can love bomb for a time. They can't hold that together forever. And they can show affection to keep a victim locked in, especially if they're drifting away. But all in all, they're only showing you affection as long as you're useful to them, as long as you're helping, you know, their image, their sexual depravity, you know, whatever it is that, that their end game is. As long as you're useful to that end game, they will show you some affection. But they're also going to severely limit your life and do whatever they can to keep you on the shortest leash possible while they still view you as useful. So in a narcissistic relationship with somebody, you're going to notice that person's very controlling. They're going to call all the shots. Uh, they're going to tell you you know, where you're going, what you're doing, who you can talk to, things of that nature. They want to keep you in a small circle as possible, particularly for anybody they pose as a threat. And a threat can come in different ways. The most obvious being somebody else that their target's attracted to. That's the most dangerous, especially if that person knows what narcissism is and knows what's going on. Then they're especially dangerous. They must be slandered and destroyed at all costs. Um, it can be other friends. It can be like, you know, friend, close friends of the narcissist target that, especially if that friend was a friend of the target before the person was with the narcissist. I said that right. They're a big threat because that's somebody that the target probably confides in. And that's the kind of person that will pull the target aside and be like, this is fucked up. Like, you do know what's going on. Like, you know, this isn't right. You got to get out of the situation before it gets worse. So the narcissist will try to isolate that person from specifically these types of people and additionally from new people entering their circle. So the narcissist, you know, 
ideally would completely isolate their target to where they are completely dependent on the narcissist for all forms of affection, communication, love, validation, whatever, to where the only person that the target has to turn to is the narcissist. So they are completely dependent and subservient to them. Narcissists love it, love it when people are subservient and completely submissive to their will. So new people coming into their circle would endanger that because wider circle, more people, you know, and some of these new people might potentially not put up with what the narcissist is doing, might be the type to call it out. So the narcissist will try to limit the target's circle to those that they can control either as enablers, flying monkeys, to, you know, the people that they can convince that they're not a negative effect on the target's life. Yeah, and they exist because some people can be fooled. You know, narcissists do fool some people. Some of them are better at it than others. But also some people just won't call anything out. It's just not in their nature. They may whisper to people other than the target behind them. They're like, this is fucked up. But push comes to shove. They'll look, see abuse go down and, you know, just put their head down and allow it to continue. I am not one of those people. But, there, you know, a, quite a few people are. So in a narcissistic relationship, the narcissist has no boundaries. They will have, their target can set up no boundaries. They will constantly overstep and encroach and encroach to where the narcissist target feels they can't say no to everything because they'll, they'll feel this way for several reasons. The narcissist will convince the target of how much they need them. Oh, I need you. Snap. And it can be the reverse. The histrionic narcissist will be like, well, you know, I need you. I don't know what we'll do without you. The, the guilt trip thing. Yeah, narcissistic parents do that too. But we're talking about narcissistic partners today. That tactic is common. Um, the narcissist will essentially be attached to their target's hip if they feel the target's drifting away or if they feel that especially if there's people uh, that the target is drawn to who will essentially blow the whistle on what's going on. As I said, they'll eliminate those people at all costs, no matter what. It's like a Terminator. Like there, there's no, no honor, no rules, just destroy, destroy, destroy. Even if that person, you know, has helped the narcissist in the past. But it's all about control. The narcissist in a relationship is all about controlling the target. It's not about love. It's not about affection. Hell, it's not even about lust. It's not about, you know, that genuine connection. It's about you are mine. I control you. And, you know, can I get this person to fully submit to my will, be it by they only talk to who I want them to talk to, they do whatever I want them to do, both like socially out in public and in the bedroom too, to where you can you completely have that person subservient and submissive to you. That is what a narcissistic partner is like. These are the signs to look for if someone is potentially in that situation. And look for the freakouts too. When the narcissist, you know, feels that that person is drifting away, they will freak out, you know, and they will feel they have the right to. They will They'll, they'll do all kinds of shit that is like crazy. Take people's phones, you know, refuse to leave their home, um, threaten people, um, start slandering people behind their back. Obviously, gaslighting one of their best tools. They'll do whatever they can to reel that person back in and get the person who was potentially getting them out of that bad situation out of the picture narcissistic partners don't care about what their partner wants they only care about serving their own needs so it's possible that in a narcissistic relationship the target will suffer at work because maybe the narcissist will guilt them into calling out or leaving early things that can hurt their work performance and also their genuine demeanor will be down like most targets even if they feel like they can't say no they're going to be ashamed of a lot of things that are going on, like, oh, this is bad, like, it, but they'll justify, like, it can always be worse, or this is temporary, or they're not always like this. Those are the kind of things to look for if you think someone, like, is a target of a narcissist and they're in a relationship. You know, you see, like, drastic uh, mood changes, if, especially if you knew them before they were with the narcissist. If you didn't, then it's kind of hard to tell, but if you did, and it's like, wow... 
that person's completely different ever since they've been with this person, like night and day. And if you know the person, you know there's like nothing else going on in their life, like nobody close to them died or anything like that, then yeah, it's probably the narcissist and the narcissist is encroaching more and more, but the target doesn't understand. They think it's going to get better. No, it only gets worse because every time the narcissist encroaches more, it's like, oh, they're not setting up a boundary here. They're not setting up a boundary here. I'm gonna go further, further and further. You know, some targets think like, well, they really care about me. And, you know, if I'm willing to do this, then they'll start treating me better. Nope, 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 no, no, not at all, not at all. So uh, there's also things to look out for, you know, if you think someone's in the situation, the target usually is the type, the narcissists seek out the types that struggle to say no, that are naturally submissive, that have... Um, issues with their confidence because those are more easily manipulated by the narcissist tactics. So those are the people, you know, that all a narcissist will usually seek out for a relationship and they'll usually latch on right away. A narcissist, when they pick a target, they'll usually latch on to that person as soon as they meet them before, you know, someone could potentially warn them against the narcissist or before they could form a connection with somebody else. And this is most common, like this is why narcissists will go after people that, you know, just moved to a new town, just started a new job. College is a big place because, you know, y'all come in from different places, transferred schools, what have you. Um, that's usually when a narcissist will make their move. And it can be difficult to see you know, looking back, I've seen this go down a handful of times. Like I said, some of them before I knew what any of this was, I really didn't know what to do. Well, in the one case, I did what I could, which was fight the guy. So, oh, college. But it can be difficult if you're the observer of this, particularly if, you know, you have friendship or really, especially if you have romantic feelings for the target because you feel like you need to do something. And sometimes there's nothing you can do because the target doesn't want to hear it. The target may know deep down what's going on, but they don't want to hear it, you know. So all you can do is walk away. Yeah, sometimes you can't win. I said this before, but we're going over it again. Sometimes all you can do is walk away because there's nothing you can do to help. That person doesn't want to be saved. That person may hate the situation they're in, but is going to allow it to continue. And all you can do is get away from it because you can't do anything and more importantly because it may be too painful to you to watch it go down so get away uh know the signs of what you know narcissists are like in a relationship understand the dynamic that you will never be the narcissist equal you will you know it'll always be a master slave relationship they're never going to let you set boundaries they're never going to let you call the shots set the tone of the relationship anything it's all you know you are my property you will do as i say or i will freak out and anybody who tries to you know convince you to stand up for yourself or set boundaries will be taken down and hard by any means necessary that is, in, in a nutshell, what a narcissistic relationship is. That is why the narcissist is not your partner. They're your master. I hope this answered the question for you on Reddit. I know some of this I spoke before. Remember to please like and subscribe and watch my older videos. Help this channel grow so potentially I can help more people. And that helps if more people, you know, know who I am and know the channel. Make me a little less obscure. So... Thank you for taking the time. Please trust your intuition if you think uh, someone you care about is in a narcissistic relationship. But remember, do not sell out your integrity to call it out because sometimes you can't. And since it's election day, go vote.